Hello and welcome to Transforms Into A Guitar. I'm Michael Bonner and this is part 5 of my series about posture for guitarists. In this video I'll show you why having the guitar on the leg on the side of your plucking hand is not ideal. I'm not doing this because I like criticising people. I do like criticising people. I'm actually doing this because I want to help people enjoy their guitar playing pain free for as long as possible. This video builds on ideas covered in previous videos, so if you haven't already watched parts 1, 2 and 3, it's best if you do so first. But you can skip part 4 if you're not a classical guitarist. If you're up to speed, you should know that everything should balance on top of something else. This way posture can be maintained with very little effort. Symmetry, Symmetry is best, because non-symmetrical postures shift the centre of gravity and necessitate tension. You should be mobile, because we're designed to move. There's loads we don't know about the human body, such as why some people are left-handed, also known as southpaws, also known as superior to right-handers in literally every way. We don't know why we have fingerprints or certain extremities get wrinkly in the bath, and we don't know why people can abuse their bodies for decades without ill effects. Yes. We've all heard about that person who died at the age of 113 despite smoking for 111 years. Yes, there's a man in Wisconsin who's eaten Big Macs every day for the last 50 years and he's still skinny. And I'm sure plenty of you will leave comments saying you've played like this for years with no problems. Perhaps you have something special about your physiology that makes you impervious. We may never know. But a study found that 60% of guitarists suffer from playing related pain with 17% having back pain and 15% having neck pain from playing. And that was among amateurs aged 18 to 30. Let me tell you something, son. After you've hit 30, your chances of getting injured don't decrease. This video is for the rest of us who might not have perfect physiology and want to err on the side of caution instead of taking risks and seeing how things turn out in a few decades' time. Oh, I forgot to mention, those guitarists with back and neck pain, the main contributing factor was found to be awkward sitting posture. A danger for guitarists is that they'll adopt whatever position puts their hands where they can reach the notes, but they're so intensely focused on the difficulties of making music that they don't notice how awkward it is for the back, and therefore the whole body. So they get used to the posture and think it's fine and relaxed, when in fact it's the exact opposite. What makes this worse is that these postures carry over into the rest of life and become a habit. Some physical therapists can even accurately state a player's instrument without being told, just on the basis of their posture. When playing with the guitar on the leg, on the same side as your plucking arm, the neck is just about parallel to the floor. There are two options for dealing with this, and neither is good. Option one, sit up straight like your parents told you. You didn't want to do that at all. It makes you up better. Leg. Bend your wrist to a crazy angle and risk carpal tunnel syndrome and decrovans tenosynovitis and maybe some other problems due to the tendons being forced around the corner, increasing internal friction. As you get older, your lubricating fluids become runnier and less effective. Also, this is a weak position for the muscles involved because of something called the length tension curve. Due to the mechanism of muscle contraction, they're strongest in the middle of their range, but when the wrist is bent like this, the forearm flexors are shortened while the extensors are lengthened. Try this fun experiment at home, but make sure you have adult supervision. With your hand in line with your forearm, put a couple of fingers into your fist and squeeze as hard as you can. On second thoughts, you should check with your physician before undertaking strenuous activity. Now, with your wrist as bent as possible, do the same thing. Notice how much weaker you are in this position. This is because none of the muscles are in the middle of their range. Muscles are also elastic when relaxed. I'm sure you know that stretchy things put up more resistance the further they're stretched. This means that the already disadvantaged flexors have to work against the increased elastic resistance of the opposing muscles, and this may overwork them. It's kind of like driving 50 miles an hour in second gear. To avoid this, people usually take the second option, sagging, and this means that none of the criteria for good posture are being met. If we look at pictures of guitarists playing like this, we can see that having one shoulder lower than the other is typical, 
and the left and right arms are positioned very differently to each other, meaning that they aren't symmetrical and the centre of gravity has been shifted away from, well, the centre. Some people do manage to sit with a spine that appears straight when viewed from the front, like these two chaps, although they were posing for photos and not actually playing. A lot of people curve the spine to the side or lean. Remember that it's impossible to isolate lateral flexion from rotation in the spine. This puts pressure on one side of the intervertebral discs instead of spreading it evenly over the whole top surface. The ribs must bend to account for the rotation, putting shearing forces on the sternum and restricting the lungs. Another common trait is to rotate the shoulders in a different direction to the hips, often because they're pushing the guitar neck forwards. This adds to the problem I've just described and also requires quite a bit of tension in the right shoulder. People often slump forwards as well because the guitar is too low or maybe it helps to clamp it in place because it's not the most stable position. In fact, you need at least one arm to stabilise the guitar. I've seen people sag so much that their elbow rests on the leg. This exaggerating of the neck and upper back curvature and reversing of the lower back curve stresses ligaments and puts a lot more strain on the muscles as well as compressing the internal organs. If your lungs are compressed, you can be sure your muscles aren't getting all the oxygen they need to function optimally. Another way of counteracting how low the guitar is is to raise the right leg with or without a footstool. The amount of strain placed on the spinal erector muscles to sit with the knees at hip height and stop the lower back rounding out is bad enough, but raising one leg further tilts the pelvis diagonally and puts a kink in the lower spine, again risking herniations as well as adding yet more tension. If you want more details about the effects of raising one leg higher than the other, you'll need to watch part four. You can skip part four if you're not a classic. Shut up! When the neck is almost horizontal, your wrist has to supinate about as far as it will go. Some people can't rotate their wrist enough and have to flatten the third finger to play something awkward, like a C chord, and obviously that flat finger could mute another string. See how, when the hand is at the same angle but the neck is at 45 degrees, the fingers can remain more curled, which is closer to the neutral position and less likely to get in the way of other strings. After playing for years with a fairly neutral posture and many months playing standing up, I tried playing some flamenco in one of the modern flamenco positions. No, not like that. Yeah, like that. And you know what? It only took about a minute to feel that it requires a great deal of effort to keep the right arm there. Maybe you just need to man up. Maybe. Or maybe it's an awkward position for a shoulder. A 2013 study found that 15% of guitarists have shoulder pain. It's certainly quite close to the edge of the shoulder's range of motion, which is not something that makes joints happy. They much prefer being in the middle of their range. It's true, innit? We do, don't we? I couldn't agree more. In the next videos, I'll examine other ways of holding the guitar that allow both hands to work freely and independently because the guitar is stable without their assistance.